IVC. Dale Gatefold 33 back to make another video and uh, this time I'm, I'm making a, a proper video I think. Um, so it's not a it's not a vinyl finds and it's not a thread response. This is uh, my go at a at an actual kind of thread thread that I'm going to start. Um, so I'm calling them um, show and tell. Uh, this is my first show and tell. I'm going to pick something to show and tell. Um, and this time I've chosen Island Records. Um, so I don't profess to know everything about Island Records. So this is my show and tell about what I know. I have made some notes, so uh, apologies for that. <coughs> um, so uh, Island Records started back in 1959 by Chris Blackwell um, is the most notable. Um, but also um, a guy called Graham Goodall and Leslie Kong. Um, but I'm going to focus on Chris Blackwell in this video and the Chris Blackwell years um, between 1959 and when he sold Island Records um, as an independent label to Polygram in 1989. Um, so there were a lot of great artists um, who've appeared on the Island <coughs> label since then, you know, like um, Amy Winehouse and PJ Harvey and Paul Weller. But I'm not going to cover those. I'm only going to cover when it was um, in the sort of Chris Blackwell's name. So um, from 1959, probably through to well, through to nearly 1967, um, the, the 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 main um, sort of genre uh, and kind of um, business model for Island Records was to um, import uh, Caribbean, um, mainly Jamaican reggae ska uh, singles and a few LPs. Um, for, you know, so um, that's how the kind of the company got off the ground, and that's what they did for for the early years. Um, so um, I don't have um, much um, from that kind of era in my collection, so I can't show anything about that. Um, so what they, um, what Chris Blackwell then did was he started to branch out. Nineteen sixty seven signed first UK artist to Island Records, and that was. The UK um, pop psych pop psych band Nirvana. Um, this album came out in 1967 on Island Records, um, and so that was the start of Island branching out. That's a reissue, um, not not an original, unfortunately. Um, so another aspect of Island Records um, that I I enjoy um, are the actual is the late of the label are the labels that so the round circular labels in the middle of the records um there have a number of variants of interest and i think i've said in a previous video that my probably my favorite um center label of all time is the what's called the pink rim island label but um i'm just going to now showcase a few of the variants that started from from 67 um so to do that so so up to 67 the labels typically look like this um, yeah, um, this is this this is a reissue. They had a. I don't know if I can focus the, the camera there. That was the island logo from sort of fifty nine through to to sixty seven. And one thing to say about the um, island island logo is it it changed. There wasn't like a fixed year. Sometimes a previous label carried on for a number of years in different countries or even in the UK, and it was a little bit interchangeable. So so. Um, it, the history is a little bit in, inaccurate, but um, the first kind of change to, to the pink sort of themed label happened um, around 67 and so around the time when Ireland was branching out to, 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 go, to go beyond the kind of reggae ska genre. Um, and so around the same time as um, Nirvana, John Martin, the uh, UK folk artist, also signed this is another reissue, not an original, but it happens to replicate the um, the first, if you like, Pink Island label. So I'll I'll show that. <coughs> so that was this label with the the eye um, as part of it. So this is a replica, as I said, and so but that was the the first of the of the labels. They then moved in 69, they kind of had a, a little dalliance with another label. Um, it didn't stay around for long, but it was most notably used on 
this album, Nick Drake's first album. Now, I think I've said again on a previous video that I, this is this is from the box set that they issued a few years ago. I bought all three box sets of the three studio albums, and they didn't really get the, whoever did the kind of quality control. I mean, the album's fantastic. The, the sound is fantastic. The package is fantastic. The label is horrible. Um, so you're going to see that in a minute. But it's the only example I've got of a of a of a brief kind of. Um, flirting with with a different label design that happened around 1969 so I'm going to use this but the cut you'll see the color is atrocious um, so so another thing Ireland is it had its own its own in, unique inner sleeve but so if you if you can um, imagine the or, the or the pink that I previously showed the shade of pink and even this is a replica which is a little bit and this this is what came out on the on the uh, reissue so you know I think anyone can see that I think they got the color palette a little bit off on that that is not the island pink but it's the only so it's the it's the only example of that label design that I have on an LP so uh, because I don't have an original five leaves left so if anyone wants to resolve that issue in my collection and send me one I'd be really grateful the next label design um, again around 69 so I say that this one didn't last very long so it's still in 1969 um, so an example this is an original um, uh, Mott the Hoople album um, and so the design that that had was a quite familiar what's called the pink eye label because it had even though it's got a white eye um, in a pink um, but that label came out in 69 and hung around for for a year or so as I said the, these kind of these labels some of them last in different countries and in different releases they lasted a bit longer and then in 1970, so here's Roxy Music's first album, a fantastic album. Um, sorry, Nazi, I've not been doing the uh, the pausing with the albums and showing the uh, showing the artwork. And this is a a laminated gatefold, so it's a bit shiny. I have taken out the cover. I just remember that bit of my. A to Z of doing videos. So this is, I say, probably my favourite label of all time. The, the the pink rim island label, which hung around for about five years. Um, so I'm showing you the other side of the record. And then in '75, so this is a release from '75. Um, as, as I've said before, one of my favourite artists. So this is Richard Thompson with his wife, Linda Thompson. Richard and Linda Thompson, Pour Down Like Silver. Um, and this album was released in 75 on this funky, funky label, mid 70s, funky label. Um, island, so Caribbean island with a palm tree, um, new variant. And then that hung around for again for about four years, um, and finally uh, seventy nine. This, this is where I'm going to stop with the labels. You'll be thankful to hear um, this album came out. This is a, a UK original um, uh, slits cut. It wasn't um, so. That, and this um, album um, was on with its original inner. Pause a bit longer for you to see the uh, the artwork. It's got a bit dark outside. I shut the blinds when I started this video because it's really really bright and the sun's gone in now. So this was on the kind of night and day or day and night. Um, so the A side of the album had um, a lighter um, uh, blue um, label with the sun on it. And the oh, the B side of the labels had a darker with the night sun. Um, uh, oh, and as you can see on this one, so this is the original UK press of the slits, but they the, 
The unique thing, because I can't find on Discogs, um, is this variant either came out with, with no band silhouettes on it, or the band silhouetted on the label on both sides, but I've got a copy that's got the band silhouetted only on one side. Obviously it makes it worth a million pounds on Discogs when I list it. But, um... So, I've now lost my notes under this. Hang on a minute. So, that's label variations. Another thing I wanted to talk about was, um, throughout that period, there seemed to be an awful lot of also licensing arrangements, such that um, Island Records or Records... Um, that were originally released on Ireland or, or released on Ireland were also released on many other labels such as um, the Sioux label released some of the reggae and soul ones Bronze, Trojan, Fontana, Brain, ZTT even in the, in the 80s um, so they had a lot of kind of licensing arrangements and, and, and sort of hookups with other, other labels uh, and notably um, in, in the sort of late 60s um, chrysalis label was formed and that's where you can the collector can get a little bit confused so what i mean here so here's again another one of my favorite artists who i've showcased before tina nogue this is their debut album um and sorry so but yeah what i should say before that is um island records had a cataloging number normally it was ilps and then a 9000 code um, for stereo ilpm and a 9000 code for mono presses and uh, the early ones were just ILP. So um, so this is where this, this anomaly sort of spreads up. So this is um, Tiernan Nogue's debut album, as I said, released in 1970 or 71 on the, on the Chrysalis label. But as you'll see, it's got, uh, I'll get that to focus, I can't tell if it's focusing. It's got an ILPS, so it's ILPS nine one five three is the is the is the label code. Yeah, it's released on Chrysalis, and as I said, that's because there was some sort of a licensing arrangement done between. I'll do that later. Between Island Records and uh, and other labels. So that's that side of it. Um, so another kind of um, iconic side of um, Ireland, well, in my mind, is they also introduced, I don't know if they were first to introduce, but they're one of the first um, labels to introduce the record sampler. And um, four of note, of which I do have them all, um, although they're a little bit tatty um, boot sale finds. So the first, um, I believe, um, Nice Enough to Eat, um, was put out, um, these were put out in, in the late 60s. Um, and as you can see, this has got um, some of the albums, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so it's got on it, um, Mott the Hoople, Fairport Convention, Spooky 2, Jethro Tull, Doctor Strangely Strange, oh, I should have picked that actually, I didn't get that one out. Um, King Crimson, Nick Drake, Lodwin Pick. Um, so that's the first. The second and, and, and quite famous, um, uh, uh, all you can eat. No, you can all join in. All you can eat with something else. Uh, you can all join in. Um, and this has got similar artists: Jeff Flurry, Tells Big Do Free Art, um, Tramline. I'm just picking up ones that are different. Uh, Clouds and Winder Kate a Frog. Um, but this must have been. I mean, imagine trying to do this today. Get get together most of your label. Um, artists on a on a cold morning in a park to have their photograph taken as put in the kind of international well obviously you couldn't do it today in lockdown but in the normal um times of international jet set artists you wouldn't get them all together on the same morning um shivering in a park for a photograph so that's and then a third of these record samplers a double this time is bumpers um so a double album um, and this had similar again Bloodwind Pig so what I'm, so I'll pick out some different ones if free this time Renaissance um, John and Beverly Martin quintessence Fothering Gay 
um, Traffic, Dave Mason, Jimmy Cliff on this one. And then the final one that I have was uh, one called LP. A very witty uh, turn of phrase there. LP uh, with a P on the front. Um, and this introduced um, Mike Heron, Incredible String Band, Alan Bowne, Amazing Blonde Owl, um, Tina Nog, interestingly, so they weren't on uh, Ireland, but they Mick Abrams, uh, Sandy Denny, uh, Heads and Hands and Feet. Yeah, so there's some different artists and some of the other ones that I've previously featured. That featured. And an interesting thing about this um, site aside, um, this featured um, a very short-lived, thankfully, aspect of record collecting around that sort of t turn of the 70s. The um, plastic with um, foam end insert so that you can clean your record as you put it in and out and it comes out beautifully clean. But what happened was this foam would pick up pick up dirt and dust and all it meant was you were nicely scratching your and um, putting surface scuffs on your record as you were taking it in and out over time. So the, um, more recently there have been some um, around their kind of 50th anniversary they brought out some um, sampler CD boxes I had a couple of them the the reggae one that covers 59 to 2005 um, and a folk rock one I think folk rock, you know, I, um, I records were, were you know, very big on there. Folk rock. So that's um, that. I've picked out now, um, and I'll quickly show them because I've seen the times ticking on, some iconic albums that I haven't already shown um, by artists I haven't already shown um, of the um, Island catalogue. So I'll just show 10 of them, 10 records, which I've got here. So 10 artists. Um, so there's U2, Grace Jones, that's Warm Leatherette, obviously the previous one was U2 Joshua Tree, Sparks, Kimono My House, Free, that's Fire and Water, Last, Cat Stevens, Big artist on mentioned just now, Fairport Convention, that's unhalf bricking. Jeff Tull's early records before they moved to Chrysalis. Traffic, this is probably my favourite traffic album, self-titled. Iconic sleeve, King Crimson. This is my only and favourite and only Queen Crimson album that I really like. I found them a bit too proggy. Um, and then finally an artist that big for um, for them which was Bob Marley and the Wailers and then there's a long story probably a whole second video on um, Chris Blackwell Island Records and Bob Marley and the Wailers. Um, but I thought I'd pick this one. So this is Catch a Fire. So a little story associated with Catch a Fire as you probably see if you've seen the video on Catch a Fire. Um, so originally um, gave Bob Marley a load of money to go back to Jamaica, record this album. He did, um, recorded it with the band on four track, brought it back. Um, Chris, Chris Blackwell um, and engineers um, then stuck it in the studio on a 24 track um, system and put lots and lots of overdubs of um, other artists, um, sort of guitar and piano and parts, etc to um, rock it up for the rock UK rock market or the world rock market that, and um, created the album that got released. Um, if you buy the, uh, so it's never been released, I think there was one very, very limited release of the four track on vinyl, um, but the um, deluxe CD edition has a version of the four track album with a couple, with a, certainly um, a couple of extra tracks that it's just fantastic. I'd love that they reissued the, um, the original album on just the four track, um, so, so the four track version. So a slight aside there. And then finally, I was gonna do a few artists that were released on Ireland that you perhaps wouldn't associate with Ireland. So um, 
Uh, Tom Waits had a, a period with Ireland Records um, during the Chris Blackwell years. Um, so he's previously on Asylum, but moved um, to Ireland. Even Bob Dylan did one album in the UK on Ireland Records. So Planet Waves was released on Ireland um, and Mountain as well um, released uh, this album on Ireland. So that's it. I'll stop there. So it's gone over 20 minutes. So um, let me know what you think um, and I'll, I'll maybe do some more of these. Cheers. Bye.